the mind is like the body and that it needs to feed. The body feeds off physical food, feeds off the breath, whereas the mind feeds off the things that come in through the senses on the one hand and on its own intentions on the other. A lot of things that come in through the senses are things that you can't control. But we do have a tendency to want to feed off them. We look for good sights, sounds, smells, tastes, tactile sensations, hoping to find some nourishment, thinking that the things we find pleasant are going to be good for us. It's like a child who thinks that food that tastes good has got to be good for it. As you begin to grow up, though, you begin to realize that okay, not everything that tastes good is good for you. And you're going to have to put up with a lot of things in the world that are not so good. This is where your intentions come in, because these are things you have more control over. When something arises, how are you getting engaged with it? How are you getting involved with it? What do you want to do with it? That's also food for the mind. And here we want to give the mind good food to feed on. So here we decide to train the mind to be still. Because it's one of the forms of strength for the mind, just getting the mind really, really still with a sense of well-being, alert, mindful. And that's nourishing for the mind. And then we think about the good intentions that we can have, the intention to be generous, the intention to be virtuous, the intention to have goodwill for, for everybody. These are good intentions, and they're good for you. So try to train the mind to feed off of good intentions and provide it with good intentions to feed, feed on. You have conviction in the principle that what you do is going to shape your life, what you do and say and think. So you better shape it well. So you do your best to get rid of any unskillful thoughts and unskillful mind states that come in and to encourage the skillful ones. That requires mindfulness and brings you to concentration. Where there's concentration, then the mind has a sense of well-being, a sense of fullness inside. And that allows you to use your discernment as to what in life is really worth going for, what intentions really are the most skillful ones. Because the practice here is a skill. And as with any skill, your standards get higher and higher as you get better and better at it. But in the beginning, it's good just to have a, a place where the mind can stay and gather its strength. And then can consider when an intention comes up, do you want to go with it? All too often we're like someone standing out in the hot sun on the side of a road. Someone comes up in an air-conditioned car and says, hey, hop in. And because we're miserable at the side of the road, we hop into the car without asking too many questions. If we lived our lives like that, we'd be dead by now. But this is the way the mind runs itself. An idea comes in, looks good, I can go for it. Because otherwise you feel bored or you feel irritable. You want something to change. But when you've got a sense of well-being coming up from within, that's as if you're living in an air-conditioned house already. Someone comes knocking at the door and invites you out, and you say, well, why would I want to go? And if they give you good reasons, you can go. But if they don't give you any good reasons, you say, no, I'd rather stay here. You're in a much better place. And you're not so hungry. So feed the mind well, give it a good place to stay. Care for it, and it will repay you many times over.